Hi, I'm Lynn Fishman. I'm coming to you from the 40th Annual International Conference on Wellness and Consciousness Studies here in Montreal, Quebec. This conference is sponsored by the International Institute of Integral Human Sciences. This is the place to be to get inspired with practical tools to live your best life. I'm really pleased to have one of our featured speakers here, Judy Bacharach. Judy is a longtime journalist. Her work has been seen in the Washington Post. She's been on CNN. And she was also featured on Dr. Oz for the release of her book, Glimpsing Heaven, The Stories and Science of Life After Death. And for those of you who don't know about Judy's work, she interviewed close to 100 people who were clinically dead. So we're talking no heartbeat or brainstem activity. And so we're going to talk a little bit about this now. Hi, Judy. Thanks, Thanks for having me. We're so thrilled to have you. So, Judy, explain to our audience a little bit, how did this book come about? Actually, National Geographic, which is the publisher of Glimpsing Heaven, came to me because they knew I was very interested in death and had written about it extensively. And they said, we'd like you to do a book on life after death or near-death experiences. And I thought, well, I was a complete cynic. Uh, this will be a very short book because there is no consciousness after death. When you die, the screen goes black and that is it. Um, and then I started doing my interviews, not only with people who were near death or who had died, uh, but with scientists, doctors, neuroscientists, and I came back to National Geographic and I said, we're not going to do near death. We're only going to do the people who were once dead. Because this is the age of Lazarus. And more and more people who were clinically dead, no breath, no heartbeat, no brainstem activity, are coming back to life. We, you and I, are walking among the once dead every day of our lives. And that is spooky and interesting. It is revolutionary. And so National Geographic said, okay, do the once dead. Hmm. And that's what I did. How interesting. How fascinating. So could you share a little bit of the commonalities of the people that you interviewed that you call death travelers? I call them death travelers because they are basically adventurers once they die. Um, they almost all of them see a very bright light. A lot of studies have been done on death travelers. And the common theme is, I saw a brilliant light, but for some reason, it didn't hurt my eyes. Mm -hmm. And some travel down a tunnel, not everybody. Some travel down a tunnel to another area. Almost everyone, and I'm talking about 75% of all people who die, uh, come back and say, I had a blissful experience. Uh, most people say I had a good experience. About 40% say they didn't want to come back to life. They found death so fascinating, not only blissful or happy, but their adventures were so spectacular that they had to be pushed back into life, as indeed two of the people I interviewed were. They said they were pushed back. One was pushed back by a relative after she protested and said, I'm not coming back to life. My body's there on the operating table, all bloody and in pain, and I don't want to do that. But the grandmother pushed her back into her body. Hmm. And another person, Dr. Anthony Sicoria, also didn't want to come back. That's very frequent. Other frequent aspects of you know, existence after death or consciousness after death is a feeling of being at one with the universe, feeling that the universe is all connected, the planets, the stars, they're all connected to each other and to humanity, and that you are at one with the rest of the universe and with other people. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting aspect. 
uh, about 50% um, of all people who die actually see the universe. That's what they say when they return. Mm -hmm. So these are exciting and interesting aspects. They're like astronauts. I would say so. What did you find most interesting in the stories that you listened to? Most interesting was that everybody who experiences death comes back a new person. And I don't mean that they necessarily become kind or wonderful, whereas before they were horrible, although that has happened. Mm -hmm. um, I mean they come back a new person in that they are no longer afraid of death, they sometimes are endowed with new abilities, which they may or may not cherish. Uh, one of the people I uh, I didn't interview, she was actually dead for a second time, but I interviewed her daughter and her husband and her doctors, came back with the ability to know what other people were thinking and to know what other people were doing. And she found that interesting, but she also found it a burden. So coming back, does not mean you come back the same person you once were. And that can be a terrific gift, or it can be a burden. And sometimes, quite often actually, it's a burden to your family. I remember you had mentioned that for many of these individuals, or at least some of these individuals, they had a hard time once they came back. Why is that so? If you come back and you say to your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or whatever, honey, I had the best time when I was dead. I saw the most spectacular things. I saw flowers that we never see in life. I saw stars and the moon and planets. And every moment was bliss. And I want to go back. Mm -hmm. And it was a great time without you. Your husband or wife is not going to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And your kids are going to be weirded out. Uh, as I say, the first person I worked about on and that I, I did a story on, Pamela Reynolds Lowry, came back not only with the ability to know what other people were thinking, she came back with the ability to know what her daughters were doing when she was out of sight. If they were dating, when they weren't supposed to be dating, if they weren't doing their homework. This can be a big burden to your kids. So you come back totally different and people don't know who you are. The people you love the most don't know who you are any longer. Mm. Yes, and you even had mentioned that someone had said, I think it was Dr. Sicoria, that our DNA, was it him who mentioned about the DNA? No. Uh, the person who mentioned the DNA was Pim van Lommel, who is a very famous cardiologist who lives in Holland. And he's done a lot of work on death experiences because, of course, a number of his patients have had them. And he is a total believer that there's existence after death. And when I said to him, you know, Pamela Reynolds Lowry came back and said she knew the thoughts of others, and it was very often disturbing to her to know the thoughts of others. I'm not so sure that part is true. And he said, death probably changes your DNA. He said, why wouldn't it? You come back a formerly dead person, your whole DNA has changed. It makes sense. It does make sense, I have to say. And therefore you come back with gifts that some people appreciate, but others don't. And there are a lot of divorces among the formerly dead who remember what it was like to be dead. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. What were the implications for you after you finished this book? Remember you said initially, you said, oh, this is going to be a short book. And, and it's all nonsense. Right. I had all my life been afraid of death. Actually, afraid is too tame a word. I was terrified. Uh, the reason I was terrified is I wasn't at all sure Satan was, was going to meet me at the door, right? Mm -hmm. I was pretty sure that I'd be happier if Satan met me. What I was sure was there was nothing. And nothing scared me a lot. Nothingness after death, to me at least, was a terrifying prospect. This has changed my life. The research, the interviews, the writing of the book, discussing it with people who were dead and with scientists and doctors really changed my life because I'm no longer afraid of death. Um, I still have the Darwinian urge to continue living. That's not going to change. All of us have that. I would. And I happen to love my children and my husband, mm -hmm. so frankly, I'm not in any hurry to leave them. <laughs> but if it comes, and not if, when it comes, I think I'll be prepared.
I'll be ready for it. At least I hope I will be, because that's the common sense way of approaching death, and frankly, of approaching life. Right. And a book like yours is going to help so many people I hope be so. prepared as well. I hope so. So, Judy, let me ask you, for people who want to find you, can you tell us where we can find you? Absolutely. And if there is anything new in your world that you would like to share with our community, can you tell us about it? I'm easily contacted at Judy, J-U-D-Y, at Judy Backrack, one word, mm -hmm. J-U-D-Y-B-A-C-H-R-A-C-H, dot com. I answer all my emails because I've received hundreds upon hundreds since the publication of this book. Um, so I will answer everything anybody asks. I may not know the answer to what they're asking, but if I don't, I will say so, or I will do my best to find out. But I believe it's a really important service to tell people that life as we know it isn't all there is. There is, for reasons I cannot tell you and I cannot explain, there is something else. And that something else begins after death. Yes. And I think the whole field of near-death research seems to be expanding and uh, growing. It is. Mm -hmm. And there is something else I want to say. Please if do. this happens to anybody, any viewer out there is, is watching, to a husband, to a son, to a daughter, a grandmother, and if that person comes back from the dead, uh, however momentary that death was, with memories of what it was like, please accept what they're saying. Mm -hmm. It's very important. It really happened to them. They aren't crazy. They're not people who just want attention. It happened, accept it, and love them. That's wonderful, Judy. Do you want to leave our audience with any important message, if you could sum up a message to share with us. I want them to be the exact opposite of what I used to be. I want them to be unafraid of the inevitable. The inevitable is death, but death is not a terrifying prospect anymore. And it is not only a very interesting adventure, it, may, it is most likely going to be a very blissful adventure. And I want them to understand that we will know more and more about death because people are being brought back from the dead after longer and longer periods of time. It used to be after two minutes. Now it's after an hour and a quarter. In one instance, after four hours. We're going to know more and more in the years to come. Can you believe that? Yes, I, four I do. Four hours. I do. And it will be an adventure. And I, I love that, and that is what I'm going to take away from listening to you speak in our conversation together, is that it's a journey, and it's fascinating, and I'm going to take that with me. I'm so I'm glad. I'm remember that. Well, Judy, it was such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so My much. My pleasure as well. And I want to say thank you to you two for joining us. We hope to see you at our conference this year or next year coming. Bye for now. Thank you.